Today we're here in the fur shed and we're going to run over how to taxidermy skin a bobcat. It's not the largest bobcat, it's just a fair sized cat. Um, yeah, we're just going to run through how to skin it for taxidermy and I'll show you. So the first place that I start when I skin something with the feet on is I start on the front legs. So if you're skinning this for mount, you have to sit and think about what type of mount that you're going to want. So let's say you want a mount where the cat is pouncing at something and it's going to have its paws visual. You're going to want to carefully assess how you're going to actually come through. <coughs> you're going to cut this out. So how most people skin things with the feet on is they'll cut up into the pad. That's how I do majority of mine. But like I said, if you have a mount where you gonna want those pads intact you're gonna have to sit and you're gonna have to think about how you're gonna get a cut up in there and around because when you're putting the fur on a form you're gonna want to you know be able to stitch it back together and it'll be hard to do that with a pad you know to where there isn't a seam in there but I'm not gonna show how to do that I'm just gonna show a quick and easy how I usually do it um, so this will be for a mount more so if a cat is walking along or if you just want to have something scum with the feet on for the wall so, to start, you just need to make an, an incision coming up the leg. So, it might help, you know, with bobcats they have a different color on their arm right here as compared to the back. So if you want, it'd probably be easiest to cut kind of along that seam of the fur. You know, I'm trying to visually show you here. You know, so like this, this is the underside and that's the back side. So if you cut along that, when it's formed back together, the seam won't be as noticeable. I'm trying to get my knife in there. And like I said, well, I how I typically do is I just cut up and through the pad. But if you are going to want those paws intact, you're going to have to go around the pad. So then once that's cut open, you know, kind of separate the fur. That's one of the issues with bobcats; they have such a thick, heavy fur. Unless you got more of like a southern, you know, thinly furred cat. But the cats that I have during my period of season is that they're fairly thick furred so sometimes it's kind of hard to assess where you already got a cut at. I'm trying to cut around. There you go. And then from there, once you got that incision made, it's just kind of slow little intricate knife work. To get it kind of cut back and round. Sorry if my hands are in the way, I'm kind of focused on the skinning, not so much on looking back up at the camera. So then, as you're in there, you know, you're just cutting that seam between where the fur is and where all the tendons and muscle is, tendons, bone, muscle, there's a lot of different stuff up in here. It's actually kind of cool, you know, coming up in here, cutting into it, and being able to actually see all the stuff that's coming into that cat's foot that makes such a deadly creature. So then, they have their side claw here, I believe it's called a dew claw, I'm not a anatomist where I know that stuff too well. So right now I'm trying to come up to that and kind of clear it around. You know you can always take your thumb and kind of pull the fur away. That's where you can kind of start pulling it back a little. So then I take a side cutter and that right there that's going to get snipped and when you snip that you're going to want to get as far 
out as he can. There we go. So bone's cut, tendon's cut on that. Now we just gotta. There we go. Here I'm actually going to try to zoom in a little. I'm not moving the cat around too much. Where hopefully it might help. This definitely isn't a speed skinning competition by any means. Notice I'm wearing just nitro gloves. I wear it with pretty much all fur that I handle. Um, for me, it's just when I go back inside the house at the end of the day, my hands for the most part are clean. I don't have to worry about getting overly washed up when I go inside. That way I'm not, I'm not bringing my work home with me, kind of. There you go. So then I'm trying to show, as you kind of get that peeled back, I don't know how well I can visually show this. As these these toes curl back, you'll come up in the joints, and you're just trying to get, like I said, get as far up there as you can. You know, to where you know you got this bone right here. You're just trying to get up as far as you can, I'm trying to pull it to the side to where I can visually show you that. It's kind of hard to, I can't quite turn turn the cat and show you, but right here, you know, like I did with the other one, I tried to get my side cutter up as far as possible. There you go, might be able to show you. So then as that's peeled back, there isn't too much bone left in there. If you want, you can even take the side cutter after it's snipped, and you can even shorten that up. Just make it even less. I'm not gonna mount this cat. I'm just going to get it tanned, but I figured might as well make a video explaining the process of how I go about skinning something with the feet on. Try to make a series of kind of how I do every animal. Then as far as tools, I mean you're seeing them, I use this, uh, I believe it's an 8 inch Victorin Victorinox fillet knife, and then just a regular old channel lock side cutter nothing too special any old side cutter will work I'm just partial to the channel lock brand not necessarily through just experience of working on animals just working with tools over my life is I found the channel lock works pretty darn good it's the most bang for the buck There we go. So then, that's disconnected. That's what the foot will look like when you're all done. You know, you'll be able to see all the individual toes. Now, once you get the pad inside out, 
You'll be able to see those individual bones. If they're sticking out too much, you can always cut them down. And then while we're here, we can always kind of peel this back for when we come back later, peeling it off. Now we're going to do the other one. I'm not going to show you the other one, just save time in the video. And then once we get to the next step, I'll show you the next step. So then after the front legs are done, I come up to the back legs. And same thing as before, I try to cut along this color line. I don't even do that just for the taxidermy skinning. That's just kind of a general thing that I do is I cut along that color line. So then the other thing you have to think about, like I had said, so with the back paws, I'm going to cut them how I always do. I just cut up, up through the pad. But if for some reason your mount is going to dictate that you want those pads fully intact, then you're going to have to sit and visualize about how you're going to cut that fur and how you're going to want it to come together. So then, um, it's just kind of the same as, you know, with the front legs, except I start on the, the foot on the back. I just work my way forward. You know, it's the same exact thing as we did on the front leg. It's no different, just a different location. And if you don't feel comfortable practicing this on a bobcat, I mean, you can do it on a raccoon, you can do it on a mink, you can do it on anything. You can do it on a fox, a coyote for practice. You know, nobody's skinning their coyotes nowadays to where you get a hold of a coyote hunter or a trapper. I'm sure you can even get a coyote to, to practice on. And when I say practice, I'm just talking kind of de declawing the feet. Once you do it once or twice, and you've scun enough things, it just kind of, it comes naturally. You ain't got to be afraid, just got to go ahead and try it. It's honestly not that hard. Most people just don't understand the concept of what do you do with the feet, you know. It's nothing like skinning the rest of the animal, but in reality it pretty much is. There's the side cutters, it's underneath the bobcat. The bobcat sat on top of it, it's pretty typical of a cat messing with you like that. Cut the toes. There we go. Let's get around where we had cut. Now I'm just working on getting it kind of peeled back to where I can kind of pull it away. Always be cautious that you're not going to run your knife through the fur. You know, it can be fixed obviously, but why create more work for yourself? There you go. That wasn't so hard. There you go. And then from there, I mean, it's it's pretty simple on coming across. So typically I do this in a gambrel when I'm actually just skinning. But today, since I'm doing this taxidermy skin, I'm going to do this on the table. I'm trying to show you and do it at the same time. Like I said, I kind of try to go along that color scheme. And then since it's a taxidermy skin, you want to get going to want to get closer to the anus than you typically do with a, a normal you know, time skinning something. So we're up around the anus. So this is a female. So I'm going to come up 
around. I'm going to get the vent with the fur. I'm going to come up to the anus and I'm going to skin around the anus out the tail. There we are, we're up to the anus. I mean, you can even get some of the anus on the fur too, it's only going to help you. You know, you want as much of that bobcat left intact as you can when you're skinning it, just because it's going to make it look more realistic. There we go, around the anus. And I gotta cut on the bottom side just to fully disconnect it. I was around, but now I got it loose. Hopefully, I'm showing that as best as I can. Finding good angles for skinning is a little bit hard with the camera. So, I got this side cut. I don't have this foot cut yet. I'm gonna do that off camera just to save time. And then I'm going to cut from this side over this way. Turn the cat over. So then we have our cut right here, and I'm going to have to transition that down to get to that line that I talk about. And the other thing, you also have to think about how it's going to be coming out of the form, what's going to work best with the form. This is just kind of what I do. Okay, there's that, so that's all cut. I'm going to get this other foot done off camera real quick and then I'll show you how I peel off from there. So I got the other foot cut. Now from here, since I have the incision made, I just have to kind of identify where that's at. Like I said, with bobcats, sometimes it's kind of hard seeing through all that fur. But I just kind of, same thing as I did around the feet with my knife, just kind of peel back. Just kind of knife it off of there. I'm just trying to open it up to where I can get a finger hold and attempt to peel off as best as I can by hand. And you gotta be careful that you're not pulling meat with it. Just creates more work. around the back of the foot. I'm mainly just trying to get it to the point where I can get a spike through to where I can get it on the gambrel. So once you start getting it peeled, it'll start going right here on the back haunches. A lot of times a little piece of meat will like to come along. Try to prevent that if we can. Just like I said, why why make more work? Okay. There's another piece of meat coming along. It's just that off right now. Okay, so that leg's fully exposed. Now from here, I'm going to kind of work this belly down a little. It's the same thing, try to get it to where it's not pulling meat with it. So that's just creating more work. Now you're 
not only pulling skin off, you're pulling muscle off of muscle and it just makes life harder. And then that's also stuff that you have to clean off later. Whereas if you can just do it now, it's already done and you don't have to think about it. Whereas when it comes to like the fat tissue, that stuff you can't quite get off, but as you're going, it's not like clean skin in a beaver. checking that I'm not pulling excessive tissue off. to the tail and then I work my hand down back around the tail if I need to take my knife just kind of clear my way to that tail ideally flip that cat over I'm just trying to get it to where I can get my hand all the way through back there and then I kind of pull towards the tail now once we're to the tail, this is one of the more fragile parts of the whole process, is we don't want to rip that tail off. You rip that tail off, you're going to be SOL. There's no other way to put that. you got to have a tail on a bobcat. So right now, I'm just trying to get all the excess tissue away from the hide to where all I have is hide peeling off a tail. No fat, no tissue, it's just hide and tail. Right here we got this little piece of tissue, I don't think it's attached. Well, let's get it out of the way. So there we are. Now we're down to the tail, just like that. I don't know how well I can show that. It's kind of hard to get this on camera. But now we got this tail separated, I can get my hand back behind the tail. And then we use our handy dandy tail stripper. Appropriately sized. We put that in there. And then we pull the tail bone out of the tail. Just like that. It's quick and easy. And then from there, you can use a tail splitter with a little bit of experience. You can take your knife, slowly guide it in. There we go. Slowly guide it in. You can poke it out. You gotta be careful. If it's a little bit, uh, if it's been sitting for a while, you gotta be careful poking the knife through. Sometimes it'll tear. The leather might be a little bit spoiled. Working my way up and out. I'm just trying to split it down to the end. And when you're doing that, make sure you're not spiraling the tail out. You don't want to spiral the tail out because then you end up with issues. <laughs> okay, so that's done. That's peeled off. Got the 
belly off. Okay, now from there, we got the whole hind legs done. I'm going to get it mounted in the gambrel. I'm going to show you how I have it mounted in the gambrel. So it's swinging a little bit on us, but this is how I have it mounted in the gambrel. I have a nail pounded through each leg. It's not pounded, I just pushed it right through. And then I have the chain gambrel up tight against that. And when you put that nail in, make sure you sit and you think about where you're putting it in. I mean, you're going to be pulling against those nails. You don't want to rip out of the leg and now you got to deal with redoing it. Bobcat's on the ground. If you got a mess on the ground, now you just got problems. Let me adjust the camera. I'm going to film this a little bit here. Get a machine, be quick and easy, that thing will pull off like a sock. But I'm just working my way around. Put a little bit of weight into it, and then it'll peel right off to those front haunches. And as I'm doing this, I'm grabbing the leather, I'm making a fist, and I'm pushing my fist down into the leather. closer your fist is to the meat or the carcass, however you want to word it, a little bit easier it'll come off. Sometimes it's easier said than done just due to the fact that there might be a little bit of fat on the carcass that you'll be slipping against, a little bit of fat on the leather. So now right here I'm up to the front legs and this at this point in time this is one of the harder parts for beginners is you're just trying to get a grip on that leg and you're trying to get your fingers or a knife something through there quick and easy just like that my, my finger or my thumb is through put my finger through and I'll show you once that's through from there, one hand on the hide, one hand on the leg, and you pull. Just keep pulling. And then suddenly we'll see some fur up here. And earlier when we made that knife cut, now we're up to that knife cut. And since we already cut around the leg, it's just going to pop right off. Or around the foot, I should say. It'll just pop right off. We got that. There's a little bit of tendon sticking off of there. We're here, we got a knife, we might as well just get rid of that tendon, it's got to come off anyways. So there's one front leg, and we'll work our way around to the other front leg. The most time consuming part of this whole thing is just getting the feet. Once you get the feet, the rest of it, it's just like skinning any other animal. It's quick and it's easy. Try it. Here. Okay, got my thumb through. Takes a little bit of muscle. If you don't have muscle, you can just use your knife and slowly knife it off. Be careful that you don't cut the hide. Here, I'm just kind of worried about I might still be a little bit connected around the foot to something. That's why I stopped pulling. I wasn't sure if I was hooked to a tendon. And if I accidentally messed up with my knife earlier, I could <coughs> rip the paw off. And now we're up to the head. I'm just kind of freeing it a little bit here with my knife. I 
I'm just kind of working my way around, getting that leather off of there. Okay, now we're up to the ears. Cut the ears off. Make sure we're not too far back. And now once you get up to the ears, you can stick a finger in an ear. And you can use that to pull against, or pull with I should say. And now, after the ears, the next thing you're going to come to is the eyes, and then the jaws. So, you'll notice that you're coming to the ears and the eyes. Ears are more so off of experience, but back here, you'll be able to feel, it's kind of like, it's hard and it's squishy, that's the cartilage in the ear. And while I notice, I'm going to adjust this camera, let's zoom down here. Like I said, we're going to come up to the eyes. It's right here, this is the eye. It's just, I don't even know how to explain it. It just, it's a slight discoloration. You'll feel it, like, if you sit and you feel, you'll be able to feel that that's an eye there. You know, those are eyes. You can feel that they're coming up. I mean, take your time, figure out where those eyes are. And then you're trying to get your knife back behind those eyelids you want those eyelids intact okay so that's open Open sesame. That one's open. Okay, now we're just working our way around. So the eyelids are up here and we're back a little further. So we have a little bit of tolerance with what we're doing. It's one of those things, a little bit more is better because that's just, it's helping you out. There we go, there's that. Come around this other side, I'm trying to get this free. Okay, now we're on to the jaws. And once we're at the jaws, we're going to want the lips. And once you get to the back of the mouth, I stick my knife in. Same thing as before, you can sit and you can feel, there's, I don't even know how to explain it, it's kind of like a little piece of cartilage, maybe this is the tongue I'm feeling, but you'll feel right here where the edge of the mouth is, and if you stick your knife behind the leather, up and out, and start to get it peeled, and then you're going to want to peel those lips off by pulling, using some leverage, a little bit of knife work, And this is where you got to be kind of careful. You know, the, the best feature of a cat, typically, on a mount, if you're going to be mounting after doing this, is the face. So the face is where you have to take the most care during this whole process. So right now I'm just kind of slowly going around. I have a little snag 
on the bottom jaw. Okay. So I'm working my way up to the nose. Feel free to take your finger or your thumb, put it inside the lips, and you can feel for that nose if it makes you feel more confident. But just through experience of skinning animals, I know I'm at the nose. I'm working my way out. Now all I have to get is that lower lip. This cat is thawed. I got the, the lower lip's kind of caught in the top teeth at the current moment. So all I got to do is kind of open that jaw. We can always stick something in there too. But I'm kind of stubborn. I know I'll get it without doing that. There you go, we got the lips. So then we take the camera and we run it around this animal. We'll see that there's not a single piece of fur left attached on this animal. This is where it's going to get kind of graphic. There's none on the hind end, there's none on the feet, front feet, there's none on the head, it's just how it goes. So now all the fur and leather is intact on this hide and it is ready to be tanned and put on a mount. I'll flip it inside out or right side out for you. show you so we got the lower lip intact when you're skinning just for fur not for tanning or everything ends up getting tanned but not for like wall hangers even wall hangers you can cut the lower lip off a lot of times it's cut off to prevent spoilage so then the cartilage you can cut the cartilage out or you can leave it uh, it's a personal preference when it comes to this fur market I take the cartilage out take it and I'll flip it. Right now the paws are on the inside. So we'll get those flipped. I'll show you those. Okay, so there's there's the paw. And it's pretty much just like a piece of skin now. So these little pieces right here, it's kind of hard to see, just the lighting and camera. You know, little pieces above my finger there, those are the bones. Those can be trimmed up either by, by you or the taxidermist, maybe you are the taxidermist. Let me get this other leg out here. I'll stand back and I'll show you the cat. There's your cat. Hopefully this was a good how-to guide for you. And if you want to see more, I've got one on Fisher. Down the road I'll make more videos too. Feel free to watch any of my other videos. And, uh, thanks for watching.